we are moving the conversation to speak about sugar sweetened beverage tax that was introduced in the Financial Act 2022 and several conversations were rife about that. I remember if Naya was not so happy that um, sugar sweetened beverages would be taxed to 10 naira per naira liter. liter and uh, this would, because according to her, it would uh, still get to human beings, those who are consuming uh, being uh, inadvertently taxed because uh, the producers would often get there. However, because the government is trying to discourage uh, the, the, the product uh, or those, those kind of product because of the health challenges, we are seeing that. But to tell us all about the sugar sweetened tax and why we should support that tax, we have um, Austin Iraoya with us right here. He's the member of the National Sugar Sweetened Beverage Tax Coalition led by the Corporate Accountability and Public Participation Africa. That's um, a kappa. Yeah. Thank you so much for being part of the program. I didn't know that uh, the sugar sweetened um, beverage has an association in the first place. So you, it, it will be interesting. <laughs> Thank you welcome, so much. Welcome to the program. She's given a brief good preamble and then of course this, um, the president signed that I think at the till end of 2021. Yeah. And then the minister of um, budget is saying, finance and budget is saying that you, we, we want to read revenue by um, getting taxes from, you know, sweetened sugar, what is it? Beverage. Sugar beverages. Right? Yeah. We want to get taxes from that. And then, yes, it makes, a, it makes some sense when you're looking at things like diabetes. It makes obesity. sense like one and type two diabetes. Yeah. It makes sense when you're talking about obesity. Sure. However, don't you think, or oh, there are people who feel that is also infringing on their rights? for what they consume. Do you understand? And then they also say, the minister had also said, then I also said that, okay, we're getting 10, per, uh, 10 naira per litre because we want to pump it back into the health sector. Mm. And another argument is, okay, why don't you just make the health sector okay in the first place based on all what you already have? But you're an advocate, so let's hear better from you. Uh, thanks so much for that warm welcome. I, I must say, um, it's not far-fetched from what you said, that mm -hmm. definitely there are going to be kickbacks, and uh, uh, that is going to take us to what are the basic um, reasons for SSB tax. Mm -hmm. SSB tax is sugar sweetened beverage tax. Yes. Uh, one understanding major people have, like you rightly said, is the fact that it's only going to infringe on their rights. Mm -hmm. But one question I ask, for instance, is what does it cost to use one's leg to buy a shoe with a simple analogy. Now you look at the consumption of sugar sweetened beverages, one key reason for the enactment of tax on it is to correct for what we call market failure. Now market failure is simply negative externalities. Whatever one is doing where the private benefit is lower than the societal benefit. Somebody for instance consume SSB and that person is prone to diabetes, like you rightly said. Mm -hmm. That person is prone to certain types of cancer. That person is prone to stroke and other non-cardiovascular diseases. You agree with me that there is no amount of benefits such a person would have gotten from the consumption of that SSB that mm. could be equated or likened to the aftermath consequences. So that is number one reason to correct for such market failure. Secondly is to incentivize what we call behavioral changes. Now people make decisions based on the amount of information that they have. Now how many people actually know how many cubes of sugar for instance are in 133 cl of an SSB that we consume? It will surprise you to know that you have nothing less than about 15 cubes of sugar. Now I come to before you and I give you a 33 cl bottle of water and I, in your presence, I decide to add 15 cubes of sugar to that bottle. Will you take it? Of course not. Of course not. So, and one of the reasons for, another reason for that SSB tax is to correct for such information failure because many people are not fully aware yeah. of right. the content. Why people argue that you should control the content as opposed to controlling the taxes people are paying? Is that the, it, I love yes. this analogy. If you put 15 cubes of sugar in front of me in a cup of water and then mm. say, take it, I won't drink it. Mm. Why? Because I have seen it and I know that 15 cubes of sugar is wrong for my health. Great. So why shouldn't we go after the manufacturers and say we are really strict. The standard for Nigeria yes. should be Do you understand? Yeah. Five cubes instead. Or two or okay. no cubes. 
Yeah, that, and if you look at that SSP, mm, it's okay. not just sugar. There's mm. natural sugar, there's sucrose, mm. there's fructose, yes. and all these are sugars, even mm. in their natural states. Mm. So people, I, I, I might lick 10 mangoes now, and then it has fr fructose. Yeah. Are you going to charge me 10 naira per mango? You know, okay. so that's... Uh, great. Uh, apart from being a member of the CAPA, I'm a research associate at the Center for the Study of the Economies of Africa. Now, why I bring that in is that... We look at SSB tax, it's not just a Nigerian thing. Absolutely. SSB tax has been implemented in about not, not less than 85 countries. countries now, right. So depending on the approach to which every government takes to implementing that tax, okay. that also defines the outcome. Going back to your question, one of the component of SSB tax is to incentivize product reformulation. Okay. Yeah, so it incentivizes the industry that instead of you using 15 cubes, for instance, to give to us 83 CL of bottle or of SSB, you could actually reformulate your product one mm -hmm. to reduce the sugar content, mm -hmm. two to use other more nutritive sweeteners rather than sugar. So mm -hmm. it's also a part of the SSB tax. But a lot of people would say that it is the consumers who really want this, who mm -hmm. have over the years been used to this product as it is, mm -hmm. that would would suffer very i've not seen uh, pro, uh, producers redesign or rejig their their uh, uh, recipes yeah their recipes instead they will factor these prices into the consumers so would you say that it has been it has been enough to disassociate uh, disassociate or rather discourage people from uh, from uh, getting uh, getting this uh, SSBs. Okay, thank you so much. Like you, you, you also rightly noted. Now, if you look at SSB tax design, it is designed in different ways. One, we can have it such that it is tax on sugar content. For instance, in South Africa, the the benchmark is on a sugar content. Mm -hmm. Likewise, in the UK, it is on the sugar content, content right. meaning that if a For producer, the, more sugar you have, the, 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 the higher the tax, the higher the tax. Yeah, I, I think that is one. Against Carlita. Yeah, I think that is one way that Nigerian SSB tax also needs to be strengthened because what you have currently is just, uh, I mean, an umbrella uh, tax imposed on per litre. And if you will look at it, ten naira per litre. The, the WHO World Health Organization is benchmark 20 is twenty percent. Yeah, exactly. Now, if you look at ten naira per litre on SSB in Nigeria, that is less than five percent. Exactly. So, so we're it, not even there yet. We're not even halfway there yet. <laughs> okay. So depending on one, it's a good start, I must say. So going forward, the tax actually needs to be looked into. How do we design it better such, in such a way that one, like the issue you have rightly raised, it incentivizes the industry to so actually reformulate. Because the industries in the approach to this task can use different measures. One, they can decide to absorb the tax such that it does not translate to increasing the price mm -hmm. and definitely it will i mean the There's purpose for bringing the, the tax will be defeated because right. basically when there is a tax on the product it is to increase the prices make it less affordable so if for instance a bottle of um SSB, yeah. yeah, used to be 100 naira for a liter, and now it is 200 naira per liter. Even someone that used to consume like 10 bottles in a day, I mean, you agree with yeah, me that we'll affordability will reduce? I don't think so. Okay. People have addictions to certain things. Great. For example, we, mm. I know smokers who have never stopped smoking because they write um, tobacco, uh, what do they say? Smokers, smokers are liable to, are liable die to early death, and then mm. they put the lungs there. Mm. They change their numbers of mm. sticks, they smoke a day. Okay. I know people that, mm. of all, sodas that we know were 100 naira before. Now people are selling 200, 300. Mm. It still hasn't stopped anybody. Mm. There are people that are addicted to sweets or to sugars. Unfortunately, all adverse, uh, you know, harmful to their uh, health. I, I, I don't think that that's enough deterrence to say, okay, it just means work harder. Or cut off for <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, no, no. If I am not agree, if I at, at, at this, at this point, yeah, gonna be pro, yes, pro and, I, and, and I, 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 I agree with you. It is yes, a very, I, I, I good, like. it's, it's a very good, uh, I mean, perspective to raise. Mm. But one thing you discover is. Uh, just like you said, oftentimes this also happens to be the argument of the industries because the industries are not sleeping. Mm. Now, so we ask, what are your evidence? Because evidence terminates arguments. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. So what we do, basically as an economist and as a researcher, we look at global uh, best practices. It is evident that in countries where this tax has been sustainably 
or effectively implemented, there has been a re drastic reduction. For instance, in Saudi Arabia, when they implemented the tax at about 80%, I tell you that about 75, they were, the first year, there was about 75 reduction in the amount of SSBs that were consumed in that country. Likewise, for South Africa, I happened to be in South Africa in 2018 when the, SSB, when the tax on SSB was brought up. Within the first year of its implementation, there was a drastic reduction in its consumption, and that translated over time to a reduction in the cases of obesity, the cases of stroke, the cases of diabetes, that also contributed to reducing the health care burdens. That what about just good medical health care facilities in Nigeria? That will help reduce some of the issues. Even now, I've decided to go for a short break. It's not a break, actually. We have um, a, a, a special hey, report, report. On, a special on, report. On, on this topic. Thank then you. we'll, you know, it'll change out of the topic. But I am out to <laughs> be against the SSB as an and I, and I am pro, and and I'm pro, and I'm pro the SSB. SSB. So you're in balance. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll be we'll right back. Our special report on the um, on, on, on this topic, and then after that, we'll continue our interview with our guests. Great. We have civilized our diet. We left the normal. Nigerian healthy diet for the civilized one. And because of that, we began to acquire all the diseases of civilization. So diabetes is one of them. They said the sugar is like a toxin to the child. But I just took it with levity. And it was that levity that caused all those things. Personally, I have a pile. And once you are induced with pile, you have to curtail your intake of sugar because it triggers it also. I love sugar. Uh, anything that has to do with sugar, I don't drink sugar. But I've been warned not to take sugar, but I don't know. I can't help it. It's only sweet in the tongue, but you don't know the damage it causes in your body. Many may be feeling that they are enjoying their life, not knowing that they are leading themselves into death. Sugar-sweetened beverages, popularly known as soft drinks, are the most commonly consumed energy drinks in Nigeria. These drinks provide a quick source of energy, but can also be unhealthy if consumed in large quantities. I drink eight, nine, and if I get more, I can take 10 cans of soft drink in a day. I take it just to enjoy myself. I'm not a fan of mineral. Personally, I have a um, pile. And once you are induced with pile, you have to curtail your intake of sugar because it triggers it also. Gestational diabetes is one of the common complications women face during pregnancy. This form of diabetes is triggered simply because the woman is pregnant. In every 1,000 women you see these days, three of three in 1,000 have gestational diabetes. Sometimes that the range can be from 0 0.3 to like even 11 percent from some studies. What is found to be uh, explanatory uh, to the development of uh, gestational diabetes uh, is because pregnancy hormone, the cortisol, the progesterone, and and others are known to make a woman make women uh, that are pregnant uh, predisposed to gestational diabetes. For the sake of her privacy, we will not be using her real name. Mrs. Grace had a great love for sugar, and with pregnancy cravings, nothing would stop her. Pregnant women crave a lot. See things she wants to eat. Yeah, I was taking it. I was bringing mugs, bread, ice cream. I was even making ice cream myself. For my children to go to school but when i now notice that as i'm doing ice cream and meat pie and all these things i eat also i didn't know i was diabetic when i have my fifth child and it was really uh, during delivery the head came out the body refused to come out but god intervened finally came out i didn't know that i was uh, diabetic i almost lose my baby in order to save my life. But the doctors were contemplating 
other is to pieces the baby and bring the baby out why they saved my life if blood sugar is not very good it can actually affect the baby the fetus that is developing it can actually lead to a miscarriage really so they can lose the pregnancy you know within the first three four months in the year 2021 the nigerian government introduced the 10 naira tax on carbonated drinks and sugar sweetened non-alcoholic beverages so there's now an excise duty of 10 naira per liter imposed on all non-alcoholic carbonated and sweetened beverages and this is designed to one discourage excessive consumption of sugar in beverages which contributes to a number of health conditions including diabetes and obesity but also this new sugar tax in, is introduced to raise excise duties and revenues for health related issues and other critical expenditures but how far has the policy gone the government uh, has not to my knowledge put in place a metric to measure what they have done and uh, I think from some engagement that we've had as an organization also, uh, the, the service required by law to collect this tax um, has not come forth with a report so far. In order to reduce the consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages, governments must take the lead in educating the public about the health risks associated with these beverages. At the same time, producers of sugar-sweetened beverages should also strive to become more socially responsible by developing healthier alternatives to their existing products, reducing... Mr. Austin, we have seen reasons why people should be pro-SSB and then the taxes that the government is paying. Of course, Joy was going to ask the question, but I want her to use her mouth and ask that question herself. <laughs> I was asking for, for, for parents who often just so that the children have snacks. I mean, that's the easiest thing to do. You just give them these snacks and carbonated drinks and give them all, all of that just to keep them for the day before they return home. Is there a danger in that? Because when we go natural and, and get smoothies, yeah. they ferment, they don't no longer taste, uh, taste well by the time these children uh, want to take them. So what's your suggestion? Is it also a, a big issue? Especially because we're also seeing child obesity. Yeah. Well, and, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. So, uh, like you said, is a very big issue. One question um, USDA asked in one of their publications is, um, healthier alternatives, are they actually more expensive? And the simple answer is, it depends on how you value the cost. Now, in terms of monetary measure, you might say, oh, it's, it's a, le a, a lot easier for you to buy a pack of SSBs I mean, for your words to go to school than making fruit juice or... Uh, but if you look at the cost over time, you discover that it is actually more healthier. Now, I give you one example for one of the countries, uh, counties in the U.S. that uh, implemented SSB. And that uh, one thing they did was to educate parents on the dangers of these sugary drinks that they bring to school and also to encourage them that it doesn't matter for instance that you have to give your child a whole apple every day to bring to school it could just be a half of an apple for instance it could just be a piece or two of banana and over time these children get used to them and they learn to appreciate healthier alternatives so it's a big issue for nigeria actually we can't if you look at it the rate of obesity amongst the kids in nigeria are growing they're on the alarming rates and this is one great measure through which this can be corrected. Another question would be in, uh, the concern. People are saying, where does this tax that you take from a liter, 10, 10 naira per, per, per liter. liter, where does it go? Is it also going to combat these diseases that is, is uh, uh, caused by uh, sugar-sweetened beverages? Or the, the financial act, what does it say about where the tax will go? Uh, thanks so much for that question. Uh, like I said, it's a very good start for Nigeria, but uh, uh, as far as uh, the utilization of that tax revenue is concerned, the Finance Act is silent on it. Uh, if you look at best pra uh, global best practices, when you have such a tax, what you do is that you do what you call earmarking. 
you say, okay, it has been projected that over a year there is going to be an amount of revenue that is generated from this tax. What are we going to use that tax revenue for? And if you look at it, it's, given that it's a pro head tax, it should be, I mean, channeled into financing the head system. It should be channeled into things like one, providing healthier alternatives, incentivizing the manufacturers to reduce or reformulate their products, basically anything that improves health. If you look at some uh, countries, for instance, in Australia, what they did was to channel the revenue from that tax into financing the treatment of obesity. Right. Different countries have also channeled that tax. If you look at the UK, the, the, it is channeled into one support for healthy alternatives for kids in school, just like you've rightly mentioned. So when you have such earmarking of that fund, one, it makes people to appreciate the tax the more. Mm. Two, it also makes people to be able to stand against the industry argument that the head, that the SSB tax is going to be retrogressive. Yeah, but if we're talking about retrogressive, and then of course, even the Minister of Finance had said that, you know, within the next five years, if we're able to mop up this 10% tax, uh, 10 uh, liter. Liter taxes yeah. of the SSB tax, it would go into the health sector. Mm. But uh, there are also Nigerians, especially the manufacturers, who believe that, first of all, it's going to reduce their uh, income by 40%, which will tra um, translate to about 1.9 trillion naira within a five-year five -year, uh, uh, um, uh, period. Mm. Of course, that will also translate to loss of jobs, mm. which will translate to other health diseases like hypertension and every other thing. So I'm saying, like, when we watched um, the, the, the special report we had, you know, we have people that say well, we take 10 bottles of some soda, three bottles of this. And why shouldn't we be exploring more advocacy as opposed, and I want us to bring this tax to Nigeria as a country. Okay. We're calling countries that are more developed than us. Yeah. We're calling countries that don't have the same economic issues as us, infrastructural issues as us, health issues as us. You understand? So these countries have achieved certain goals that it's easy for them to say, oh, okay, now, because people are eating so much McDonald's or burger fries or whatever it is, they're getting obese. For us, you can't get obese on that. You have to say, you know, we don't have, um, uh, where, people, where they're now trying to go, you know, organic food because they, they, they're tired of their junk food. Nigerians naturally eat organic food because when you want to eat junk food, you have to make a savings. So we have a different climate. We have different, uh, everybody cooks with fresh tomatoes. Everybody goes and buys raw yam. How many people go to fast foods to eat, you understand? Mm. Yeah. Not the average populace. Mm. Now, so the question is, shouldn't we not just quickly run into adapting taxes that other people are doing because they have a functional society, but say, look, we need to get the health sector involved. We need to get media houses involved. We need to get print media. We need to do more, you know, sensitization in the markets to say these things are actually helpful. So people now make an informed choice. So if if and I would rather have done maybe four, five, six bottles of soda a day, I have this consciousness now that oh, I didn't know because it took America years. You're right. Before I want to call the brand because I watched the interview, Coca-Cola actually admitted when I think their CEO was being interviewed and he said, no, it's 15 cubes of sugar if you translate it. It took them years. So shouldn't it be easier for Nigeria as a country to say, look, let's get other things right first. Let's get our infrastructures right. Let's get the health sector right. Let's get the primary health sector working. Let's get people to do early testing for diabetes, not until you feel sick or you're pale or you're weak. Then maybe we can start controlling. But of well, course, you're the expert, so tell us. Thanks so much. Uh, two things I'm going to speak to very quickly Please. is on the claim that SSB tax uh, could lead to job loss. I, I must tell you that evidence has shown that in most of the countries where SSB tax has been implemented, there has not been any significant job losses. Now, to explain that, you, you discover that one, one of the things that the industries of, uh, always uh, often overlook in their argument that, oh, this tax policy is going to bring about jo job losses is the fact that 
they, they fail to recognize the fact that there is a room for product reformulation. Okay. And once there is a product reformulation, meaning that the industries have no cost, for instance, to uh, lay off workers. For instance, if you, if you look critically, you discover that even some of these industries that were solely based on SSB manufacturing uh -huh. have begun to diversify their production portfolio. Some of them have begun to produce, for instance, bottled water and other healthier alternatives. So there is no room per se for that job loss. Similar argument, I'm going to take you back to I mean tobacco because earlier on you make reference to the tobacco yeah, tax. Similar argument we had and one question I asked then for instance is you look at the aboki on the streets that basically retail the tobacco. How many abokis have tobacco as a sole product that they sell? And that is to tell you that even when there is a reduction in demand for that product because it is not a sole product there is going to be a continuity of their enterprises so there is no room for job loss and i'm going back to looking at our clients yes nigeria if you for instance look at the head financing in nigeria mm -hmm. very uh, against very poor i mean the highest we've had just last year was about five point something that has been the highest for the, for a period of time five point something percent mm -hmm. I mean, yes. by the time you, you, you translate that to health care for an average Nigerian, that is less than 1,000 Naira per Nigerian uh -huh. per year. So should we wait until, I mean, everyone is dying, the gap keep widening? So irrespective of whatever things we think or the client might be, this is the right time for SSB tax to be implemented in Nigeria because it is going to be number one amongst all, every other, other uh, benefit. It's going to be an avenue. For the government to raise funds mm -hmm. and when such funds are earmarked, it will better the lot of nigerians okay so i have two questions first of all where are we in implementing this tax what is the national sugar sweetened uh, beverages uh, coalition doing to ensure that the tax is increased i don't think that 10 naira per increased? liter yes i don't think 10 naira per liter is enough getting, getting this word implemented <laughs> yes now. so how how is this implementation in your words i would like to know how we would ensure we see this implementation and that producers of this uh, beverages would indeed pay those taxes Thank you so much for that wonderful question. Where we are currently, it is just about a year that this uh, tax has been has come into play. So it is going to take a period of time. So currently, what we are doing as an organization is to have an economic research to look at what is going to be the potential health gains and uh, revenue gains for Nigeria. Secondly, it's also to drive to champion advocacy mm -hmm. for awareness. People need to be informed. The information failure needs to be corrected. Schools also need to be involved, informed. Healthcare workers need to be involved. The media, everyone needs to be on board to drive this advocacy. But if you look at it also on the part of the government, I think the government still has a lot to do because SSB task currently is still within the Finance Act and the Finance Act is a yearly thing. Yeah. So we need a sustainable pathway and that sustainable pathway should be a legislative framework that gives a backing to, to SSB tax. And when there is such backing, you discover that there is room for review over time. Mm -hmm. And such review should be able to factor in, for instance, inflation over time. Because if, like you said, over, over time, the income of Nigerians grow, exactly. someone might be able to uh, afford, buy, yeah. afford, I mean, exactly. over time. So whatever we, the increase is over time, it should account for inflation. Because 10 era for, I mean, as it were last year, this, the value is not the same as it is, is this today. year. So I think with such effort, it's going to be a win-win for all. Well, win-win is a good way to end the program. We really we have run out of time. Thank you so much, Mr. Austin Iraoya, Researcher, you. Associate Center for the Study of the Economies of Africa, yeah. member of National Sugar Sweetened Beverages Tax Coalition, led by the Corporate Accountability mm. and Public participation africa many thanks for being on us thank you so much it's a pleasure to be here thank, thank you for being here thank and on that you. note we'll wrap up this segment i mean this episode today but of course we can leave without saying thank you so much for making out the time to spend with us this morning i am ifunanya amafili and i'm joy have a wonderful day